Following Facebook's recent announcement it would be taking part in an initiative to launch a stable coin known as Libra, there's been much debate about what impact it may have on the existing financial services landscape. So we're delighted to be joined in the studio by the Irish Finance Minister, Michael Darcy, who's here at Cybos to talk about Project Libra. He's also here to talk about blockchain and more specifically, how it's playing a big part in the Ireland for Finance strategy. So welcome to Cybos TV, Minister. And look, what is the Irish government's current position on Libra and other stable coins? Well, Libra and stable coin, they are new, they're a challenge. Um, I know some governments and some departments of finance are opposed to it. We're not opposed to it, but we are cautious. Um, my role as Minister with Responsibility for Financial Services has me looking into this in substantial detail. I am cautious in relation to stablecoin. I'm cautious in relation to Libra. My senior minister is uh, determined he uses, he's very cautious. So, and the Central Bank of Ireland regulator is cautious. So we're somewhere between cautious and very cautious. Can I ask you why you're cautious? Well, we understand and accept the benefit that uh, a stablecoin can have uh, internationally. Um, that said, it is a, an opportunity, but it's also a challenge, and we can't pretend that that challenge isn't there. Um, that challenge potentially is there to governmental policy and uh, monetary policy. Um, so the door isn't closed in Ireland to this, um, but we will be careful, and we will, of course, interact with our European partners uh, before there is a, a final position. Mm. So there's a monetary policy challenge to governments, yeah. but what about to regulators? Yeah, well, regulation tends to catch up only when it has to. So Libra hasn't been launched, there isn't a global stable coin as of yet. So from the regulation side, regulation hasn't caught up. Um, what we don't want to end up is regulation catching up too late. Uh, so we have to be careful, and I think we are being careful. We are being responsible. It's the benefit of Libra that I see is the conversation is now being held. So rather than trying to play catch up, I think regulation will get ahead of it and uh, try and improve it. I see the benefit that can happen mm. for consumers in relation to Libra or any other stable coin. And that's why I'm cautious, while others are very cautious. I, I want to focus on the Ireland for Finance strategy that I alluded to in the introduction. How does how is blockchain complementary to the existing financial services sector in relation to that strategy? Yeah, so a major pillar within the strategy is innovation and technology. And we see that blockchain will have a huge aspect of that. Uh, the application of it uh, via the, we will be establishing an innovation district, which is an area that we believe we will have a crossover between financial services and the technology companies and other companies. Uh, born on the internet companies, have the European headquarters in Ireland and Dublin. And we just think that the crossover there uh, within that area will be crucial. Uh, the blockchain aspect of it, we will be establishing a fintech foresight group. Uh, the Banking Payments Federation of Ireland will be the lead people in relation to that. So it's how we take uh, the fintech aspect of new finance. Uh, the, you know, they will create challenges, but we're satisfied we'll be able to meet those challenges also. Okay, and, and that leads quite nicely into my next point. Those are the challenges, but also these are the opportunities. This is a manifestation of those opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the reason I'm, I describe myself as cautious in relation to uh, Libra and to other stable coins is because I see the benefit that they can have for the consumer. Um, but we have to be careful as well. My senior minister is very cautious. Um, so we have to try and balance that caution. We have to have, understand and accept the challenge, um, but the opportunity is there as well. We have a lot of businesses with a hugely vibrant fintech uh, sector in Ireland, and we believe it'll be stronger and better. I mean, I get the caution, but how, d how is Libra a threat to the way that Irish consumers operate and indeed businesses in the way that they transact? Well, I guess Libra, is untested. The word that stands out for me most of all in relation to Libra is that the theory of Libra is fine. It, lo it looks to work well in theory, but in practice we have to see how it will operate. Uh, there will be challenges, there will be challenges, perhaps even unforeseen challenges, that we aren't prepared for just yet. Regulation has to catch up. So Libra and other global stable coins right now ha aren't in the system. So we have to be careful in that manner. We will be careful. We will operate with our European partners in relation to this, 
the regulator in Ireland, of course, is an agent of the European Central Bank, and Europe will take a position. Um, I, I, again, with Libra and other stablecoin, I make the point that you don't get to put the technological genie back into the technological genie bottle. The technology is there, it's how we apply it, how we attach regulation to it to make sure it is a positive rather than a negative. Let's take a look at the, the wider aspect here. I mean, what is it that you're hoping to achieve from the Ireland for Finance strategy? Because yes, you've alluded to this relationship between government and educational institutions, effectively turning, the, uh, the, turning Ireland into a hub, if you like, where everyone can gather. But beyond that, yeah. what's, the, what's the goal? The goal is to make sure that Ireland holds on to what we have and advances even further and moves Ireland up the value chain. You know, only two years ago, it would have been inconceivable to think that we would have rating agencies based in Ireland. Uh, we, ha we are in that space now. Uh, we have a hugely vibrant sector um, with very strong areas within this, each sector. So it's banking payments, insurance, reinsurance, aircraft leasing, fintech, sustainable green finance, and of course, the biggest sector within financial services in Ireland is funds. So we want to hold those, we want to add to them, and we want to move ourselves up the value chain. Is the central bank and indeed the country equipped to take on additional systemic risk? Because, yes, it's great this tech journey, having all these huge companies, the so-called fangs, coming over sure. to Ireland, but there is that risk. Well, it isn't a systemic risk for Ireland because uh, we are, our regulator is the Central Bank of Ireland, but they act as an agent of the European Central Bank. So everything that will be happening will be happening on the basis of agreement with our European partners. So I, I don't see that it's a systemic risk for Ireland as such. Um, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm cautious in relation to uh, these new products. Uh, we've seen in the past that potentially new products, if they become very complicated, get packaged, sold on, the damage that they can do. So we are cautious. As I said, my senior minister is very cautious. So we're somewhere in between. OK, but assuming that all goes well with the Ireland for Finance strategy, it will generate jobs. Sure. So how many jobs do well, you think it's likely to, to create? Yeah, the strategy is, the, uh, our calculation is there'll be an additional 5,000 net new jobs. The previous strategy in the same period was 10,000. But we can't ignore how technology gets applied. We are satisfied with the application of technology that some jobs will fall off the financial services ladder. Uh, but we're very clear that we don't want to lose those people. We want those people to retool, to reskill, so they've built up knowledge, experience, skill sets over many years, and we want to redeploy those people back into the sector. So while the uh, number of jobs that we're looking at may not be as high as the previous strategy, we still feel that uh, 5,000 new net jobs is very achievable. And that's just the beginning? Just the beginning. Michael Darcy, Irish Finance Minister, we have to leave it there, but thank you so much for joining us on Cybos Television. It's been my pleasure. Thank you.